Welcome back to a new episode of the Travel and Mockery podcast. Um, this episode, we're going to talk about strength training, as this is one of the Travel and Mockery college episodes. Um, I've got Kate. Kate has done a uh, PhD in uh, strength training for triathletes. Uh, and I probably know just as much about you, uh, if you're listening, about strength training. I do it. I go to the gym to get a, be a little bit more ripped physique. I think it's, it's helped me with swimming, but... Uh, yeah, to dive deep into it, I've uh, got an expert on the show, Kate, l- right down from Australia. It's been a struggle to get each other on, but uh, yeah, we'll be seeing each other in a couple uh, couple months. Um, yes. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so I have a background as an endurance athlete. I've always, traditionally we started off, I love running, um, but I've always loved going to the gym as well. And that really um, sparked my career. I did a double degree in physio and sports science and worked in the private practice world of physio for a while and just became a little bit frustrated at the sort of patient in, patient out kind of side of things. I didn't really like that too much. Um, So I went back to uni, enrolled in my research, which grew bigger and bigger over time and yeah like you said I completed my PhD I looked at the effects of strength training on performance in long distance triathletes and from that grew our business here in Perth called Endurance Movement where we prescribe strength training for endurance athletes so swimmers cyclists and runners and triathletes Um, and that's pretty much my bread and butter and what I do Um, we coach athletes we love working strength training injury prevention combining that strength training and physio together so that's pretty much my my last career and and my job in a nutshell. How, how did you um, conduct the study at the time about strength training? Yeah, so it was a big study. So it was a big intervention study. So it went over the duration of 26 weeks. So we recruited 30 long-distance triathletes. They were here in Perth and we randomised them into we had one control group and another group who did their normal endurance training plus two strength training sessions a week and the control group just did their endurance training. Um, we couldn't match their training because they were individuals um from across different clubs but in our end results when we ended up comparing the intensity and duration of their endurance training they did actually match up Mm -hmm. um so we created a simulated triathlon where all triathletes did a swim bike and run where we measured swim performance running economy and cycling economy over that simulated triathlon we did that um before the strength training intervention midway through and at the end um and then we compared the differences in the improvements in the economy um, between groups and from pre to post in their own groups as well. Um, And we found that the strength training group significantly improved their cycling and their running economy, while the group that just did the control um, training, so that was just endurance training, did not. Um, And these were big improvements. The cycling economy improved. What did mainly uh, 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 improve for them? Is it like the technique or is it it like literally just getting more efficient (laughs) run-in? Yeah, we, we mainly, well, we measured maximal strength um, and skin folds, um, muscle uh, like girth as well, and um, but it was mainly the economy that we measured and the actual mechanisms of how that improved, it's still even generally a little bit more hypothesised in the research, but generally it's assumed that this is from improvements in maximal strength, improvements in muscular tenderness stiffness. So you can think of that as like when you run and you hit the ground in your body, has that elastic energy to propel you then forwards. So we we um, hypothesised that they significantly improved that from the loads that we gave them. Um, but it's mainly that those factors that contribute then to those improvements in economy. So how um, much oxygen the athletes consumed and energy they consumed at their particular paces and power. And what was the um, the test that they had to do? To, in order to make that, it, for that, example, for uh, a suitable for, for example, long distance athletes. Yeah, so we put them through a 1500 meter swim and then they did um, a 60 minute ride and a 20 minute run. Um, and we did that. So we ended up doing like 180 of these tests in total. So oh, right. that was. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. not not on one participant, just in total across yeah, the whole. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was it was huge. Like it was the first of its kind in terms of doing the swim bike run, um, because a lot of the time when we look at strength training improvements, we propose that what it actually do- does is it um, it 
improvements in maximal strength means that those type 1 muscle fibers so the slow twitch muscle fibers our more efficient ones as endurance athletes it means that we can actually improve their ability to tolerate fatigue which means that we then don't recruit the type 2 muscle fibers the less efficient ones until later so when you're actually testing athletes and you want to see if strength training or any form of intervention makes an improvement to their economy Mm -hmm. you have to do that in a prolonged test you can't just do a 20 minute run and expect to see improvement improvements because you actually need to create the changes so you need to fatigue them so those type 1 muscle fibers start to fatigue yeah. you want to fatigue athletes enough so you know like in the back end of an Ironman no one looks pretty running <laughs> um, oh. so you want to actually create those biomechanical changes so that's why we did it over like a prolonged testing period I, I must say, um, I've been, I just I love going to the gym anyway. Apart if it's good for triathletes or not, uh, get the <laughs> testosterone up. But um, I must say, for me, it definitely helped with my uh, with my swim with the push phase because what I've seen with many triathletes is they uh, pull their hand out the, out of the water too quick, whereas so they don't really have a push phase. Whereas the push phase mm-hmm. mainly gets you uh, in the most, most amount of speed. And I mm-hmm. think that definitely uh, gave me the most uh, most improvements. So in this episode, we'll uh, we'll talk about why triathletes should be doing strength training. I think in the future we've got a couple of more uh, subjects we want to talk about. For example, periodization. Um, mm-hmm. I would say uh, uh, weights. Uh, we we have written some t- sub- topics down, so we'll dive into it uh, on everything. Um, but yeah, let's. So the basics: Why would a triathlete that is probably time starved? Um, why should he go to the gym? So you can get improvements from obviously your swimming, cycling and running, from swimming, cycling and running. But Mm -hmm. if you're looking for, you know, taking your performance to the next level or if you've been doing triathlon or any of the endurance sports for a while, you're eventually going to hit your ceiling and Mm -hmm. you're going to stop adapting as much to that particular stimulus that you put in. So your strength training improves generally what we call like that muscular power. So we talk about, um, you know, the body's ability to produce force and produce power after a prolonged time. And that's what really helps your strength training helps you improve your performance. So if you are already, um, you know, doing all the swim, bike run, you're going, I I really, really want something to help me up to that next level. That's where your strength training comes in. So you can improve your economy, but it's not only, uh, and your performance, but it's not only that, it's keeping you robust and injury free. So there are studies that look at injuries in triathletes and it's, there was one study that looked at a 16 week period before an Ironman and 86% of triathletes reported a form of substantial injury in like mm-hmm. that 16 weeks so the four months and lead up to a race and by doing strength training you can build up your tissues so your muscles your tendons your bones build up their ability to tolerate load so if you go out oh, look I'm, I'm loving triathlon I want to take this to the next level but my body just can't seem to hack all of the endurance training that's where your strength training can come in right and help mm-hmm. um, so you got the performance stuff like you were chatting about you know like improving that pool and helping you feel more powerful but then it's like you might feel really good pulling in the pool and you're going yes I've really got this powerful pool now but then oh now my shoulder is miggly so yeah. there's no point having that amazing powerful pool if you can't no, pop kind of in the best swim. pool in the so world but <laughs> yeah but if you can't get in and actually do your swim there's no point right so there's like a, a multitude of reasons but your main thing is those performance benefits and helping you train consistently by being injury free does it does it then matter um strength training for example for a sprint distance athlete or ironman athlete should they all be doing yeah. it Everyone, all of everyone, yes, should still be doing it. Absolutely, it does. You might want to change a little bit of the emphasis um, on some particular exercises, but absolutely, everyone should be should be doing it, hundred percent. And is is it also different from athletes that already train, for example, a lot of hours? They're time starved. Um, they wouldn't have, for example, a lot of times. Would you say, all right, ride your bike an hour or less and do some strength training, or? Uh, what you say an hour a week is not going to cut it um, because in the end uh, for many people it's just uh, they don't have a lot of time uh, it's another yeah. thing they'd have to do yeah well our, my first study of my PhD actually looked at the barriers to strength training and time yeah. surprise was the number one barrier and yeah, yeah, how yeah. much 
triathletes train like often it's the age group is more than the pros right so that's not <laughs> surprising at all <laughs> but I would say if you're looking to take your performance to the next level or if you just get chronically injured give up a little bit of your endurance training to strength train yes like you will still see performance in improvements um definitely and generally once a week you can maintain strength benefits but if you're looking to improve you need to do it twice a week but they don't have to be full-on sessions like you could go to the gym twice a week for 30 to 40 minutes and you can still if you have a good program you can still Mm -hmm. see some good improvements but definitely give up um, a bit of the endurance (laughs) <laughs> life hack for, life hack for me is uh, I, I don't know if many people have got the luxury uh, but um I've got a gym right now that's literally next to the pool where I'm swimming so I I would if you're really time starved I would combine the yeah. session so go to the gym after the pool and uh, um work on that strength training a little bit that's that's how yeah. you can hack it but if you need to go for, on separate times that is my yeah. hack. I tell people that all the time. I, whenever I ask, I'm like, do you have pool membership? Yep. I go, is there a gym next to your pool? Yep. I can guarantee you most people yeah. say yes. I'm like, and even chop off the back of your swim, right? Or like something. Mm-hmm. And you think about, unless you're a horrendous swimmer and you've got so much room to improve, the extra time that you would spend doing that extra little bit of swim, you're going to get bigger performance benefits if you hit the gym instead. <laughs> and or or go to the gym and then do an easy recovery run afterwards to loosen up the legs yeah. that's uh, yeah, e- either one of them or, or gym in an easy tick over of the arms in the pool in um so if uh if, if doing strength training you'd say you'd say basically twice a week because i also hear many triathletes saying if i would go to the gym too often i would become an arnold schwarzenegger and that would be <laughs> detrimental to my performance because muscle is weight way too slow yeah. with running uh you yeah. know if I, if I put on 15 kgs of of muscle i will become a slow <laughs> athlete what what do you have to get yeah. say against them i reckon this is my biggest barrier that i face so often not only with athletes but with coaches and um mm-hmm. i've had one of my um research publications put on this sports science page where they turn research into infographics and I remember this one coach just going absolutely ham on there commenting like no no triathletes should do strength training because they're just going to bulk up and it's going to make them slower so first of all research shows that that's not the case when you're an endurance athlete and you're training big loads your body actually has hormones and particular cellular signals that actually get in the way of being able to hypertrophy so bulk up so like Mm -hmm. even if you went and hit the gym and we're crunching all your weight it's, you're unfortunately not going to look like Arnie Schwarzenegger unless you eat extravagant amounts and stop all the endurance training. But also a big part of muscle hypertrophy comes from getting the sets and the reps right. Mm-hmm. So if you were doing proper heavy loads, like lower um, rep ranges with heavier weights, it'll make you less sore, believe it or not. But also they're, they're not hypertrophy, they're not bulking ranges. So you mm-hmm. can pick your exercises right. But also even in the research studies and in ours as well, what we actually found was there was um, no difference in body mass, but some studies have shown an increase in lean muscle. And that's exactly what you want as an athlete because there was an increase in lean muscle, but no change in muscle mass. What that meant was, uh, sorry, in body mass, what that meant was that the athletes were actually the same weight, but their body composition had clearly improved. It was like their fat had actually been replaced with that muscle. And Mm -hmm. that's what you want, right? Like that's where your glycogen is stored. You want that. (laughs) It's a good thing. Since uh, like after... uh, after September, I, I've literally went down from 25 to 30 hours a week training to literally, um, I would say the top weeks were 10 hours of training and the other week, something like six to five hours after like hardly anything. But I did go to the gym every week, twice a week. Um, well I was still eating. Uh, I just I just love going there. But I must say I'm, I'm not bulky, but I also didn't really become fat in the time. I must say I'm still almost as lean as what I was yeah. in uh, September. Yeah, and, that's it. It helps maintain that body composition. Mm-hmm. And it, it's hard to start off because obviously you'll 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 find yourself you're doing something new. It's a new uh, uh, stimulus to the body. So yes, you will find yourself being a little bit sore. Um, but then once you get into it for a couple of weeks, like I've been doing it now since September, and uh, well last year I wasn't doing it, but just uh, I wanted to get back into it. And then uh, if you just do it every week, um, yeah, I found it definitely uh, made a difference for me. But then the question for many is, 
do I go with the free weights, like free solo, mm -hmm. or with the machines? Yeah, I think that really depends on where you're at as level of an athlete. Mm -hmm. So if, if because we'll chat a little bit more about like the the loads and stuff. Yeah. Um, but if you want to see proper performance improvements, you do have to lift a relatively heavy weight. And some athletes who don't have a gym background might hop under a barbell and go and do a squat and just go, whoa, this is an overwhelming feeling with this like heavy barbell on my back or they mm -hmm. might not want to say deadlift a heavy weight. So if that's the case, I would say hop on a machine like a leg press um, and then go heavier on that, like build your way up, but you can go heavier on that because you feel more confident and you can get in the appropriate load. But the benefit of going the free weight side of things, so like a barbell um, movement, like a squat or a daddy, is that they're multi-joint compound movements. So what that means is you're getting in lots of muscle groups and working lots of joints. So example with a deadlift, you work your glutes, you work erector spinae down your back, you work lats, you work your hamstrings, you're working everything. But if you were to say compare a deadlift to an isolated leg extension or let's say a leg curl, you're just working hands hamstrings so mm -hmm. if you can go the more free weights but if you're not feeling confident still go machine based because that's better than nothing it's better so it's, than going ah free weights it's too overwhelming the, the the you'd say the machines is more of a static movement where you would literally just isolate uh, the main muscle whereas um the dynamic movements you also trigger some of some of the smaller tendons and muscles that you uh, are very likely to use when running and uh, this is also where, where the most amount of running injuries come from, right? So uh, a really common run injury is, for example, uh, the IT band, so a runner's knee. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What you see is either, well, bad technique or uh, bad, bad equipment, but the majority of it comes from weaker uh, glute muscles, so the, the butt. Yeah or, or yeah. uh, where, where it compensates then uh, around the knee. And there are like loads of exercises, more dynamic ones, where you trigger the smaller muscles around that yeah. area in order to, uh, yeah, get the tension off the, uh, the tendon. Yeah, e exactly. And you can't really rehab your way out of ITB syndrome just with doing like an isolated leg extension because mm -hmm. it's just not going to be appropriate. So like in that instance, that's where definitely doing some free weights where you can really do really, really target those glutes, like you said, is much more appropriate. So you could complement like single leg deadies, um, some like banded sidewalks, um, you know, anything like that. Uh, step ups are a really, really good exercise for ITB syndrome and they're all more of those free weight kind of ones and those compound movements like we we're talking about because the benefits of the compound movements with like your free weight movements is that they also work on what's called motor unit synchronizations um, and it's getting that like, more coordination as well and that's a big part of injury prevention so mm -hmm. say with a step up you're teaching all of your muscles and those joints to like work together properly in a movement that replicates running so you can work on the neural pathways and you can teach your leg this is how we want to work this is what we want to do to transfer over to running and that can also be really really beneficial but yeah you're not going to get those benefits with a more isolated exercise yeah i think the uh, for for main people still like um um there might be hearing this and thinking all right i hear all the benefits but how do i need like all right i'll go there i'll get the bit into the membership um how do i get started would you do a would you are you a fan of warming up Yes. Warm up? Yes, definitely. All right. Definitely warm up. I think the first thing when you get started, you go, okay, Kate and Tom have sold me. I'm going to go join a gym tomorrow. I'm going to hit the gym, right? I'm going to turn into a gym junkie like Tom. But the first thing is to be aware that you may pull up a little bit sore for the first two weeks. And I think, like, you, you know, if you're doing, say, two gym sessions a week, those first two weeks, your legs are going to be a little bit achy or wherever you've worked. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important to have that expectation because I think if you don't and you go to the gym and then the next day you're like, whoa, my legs feel dead and it's this shock and then you try and go for a run, you're expecting to do a intervals run the next day it's probably not great and it's going to put you off strength training so first thing have realistic expectations next thing 
always warm up, especially if you've gone real keen beans and you go, Kate says that heavier lifting is better and that's where I'm going to get my performance improvements. Don't just go jump on the leg press straight away and pile on all the weights. I generally set up sessions where I tie in injury prevention exercises um, as a warm up in the lead up before a heavier lift. Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, you're going to do some heavy barbell back squats I would say okay let's do some uh, popper band around your knees let's do some goblet squats so you can think about working those glute meds because like you were talking about ITB IT um, band syndrome is a common injury so if you target those glute meds we can help prevent that injury so you can tie that in with your warm-up there do some goblet squats do some lighter weight stuff get your body used to the movement feel confident with technique use lighter weights or no weight and just go through the movements and spend a good like you know 10 minutes doing movements that are applicable before your your main set exercise so we think about say your main set exercise so let's just say leg press because that's a great one to start with so you go okay on the leg press I know I'm going to work my glutes my quads and my hamstrings so yeah pick those exercises in your warm-up or your activation that work those same muscle groups so Mm -hmm. say you pick a couple of those then go over to the leg press and just do some reps on the leg press or whatever you're doing without even adding any weight. Like just see how it feels, get your body ready for the movement, do say six reps at that weight and then add a little bit more and do say another six reps at that weight, then go into your main set because then you're going to actually know that you're not going to cause yourself an injury in the gym because you're adequately warmed up. In in the future, we'll we'll be going a bit a bit, little bit more about like uh, uh, the reps and sets for for improvement. But um, we can maybe as an example dive into the uh, gym routine what I'm doing, and you can say yep. then afterwards where uh, where is uh, where there are improvements. So I'll be I'm I'm going okay. to be on your plan uh, as of uh, awesome. uh, next week. Uh, but yep. this was the uh, the Tomo Shadek plan. So did, basically. Did you make this up? Yeah, I made it myself. <laughs> okay, so I'm only critiquing you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's no one, yeah. uh, no PhD here, just uh, good old, my own rocket science. <laughs> so, all right, I'll go to the gym. I'll take a little pre-workout to get uh, to get the blood pumping. Of What's course, the pre-workout? Yeah. Wada wow, tested. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, basically <laughs> just a lot of caffeine and uh, beta aniline to... Uh, you just feel like you're fucking alive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, then as a warm up, I would hop on the uh, just a stationary bike, do something like five to ten minutes, just uh, looking around at the gym. Who else is there? Because that's also part of the gym, <laughs> isn't it? Um, <laughs> then uh, um, I would do with a uh, elastic band, some hip bri- hip bridges and uh, hinge movements um, to get the um, uh, the hamstrings warmed up and uh, a little bit of the uh, the glutes and uh, lower back muscles. And then actually I'll start getting into the uh, the weightlifting. I always start off with lunches, lunches with weights. Um, I've been I've been building it up over the over the weeks. So I was always doing between eight and ten reps. Started with doing something like twelve kilos, I think, and now I'm doing it twenty kilos each side. Mm-hmm. Um then after the uh, after the lunches, I would do something like uh, uh, deadlifts. I would do deadlifts. I found that when I started off, I was doing heavy uh, deadlifts too heavy. Whereas I could, if I would do them too heavy, I would could feel my lower back. So I was starting doing them a little bit uh, less heavy. So I started off doing something like fifty kgs, and now I'm doing something like eighty or ninety, and then still like eight reps, everything free sets. Then. Uh, uh, so it's that dead, deadlifts, squats, um, then it's hamstring curl and the uh, uh, leg press. And then I would go to, over to like the upper body muscles where I would just do the lat pull down because that would mm-hmm. simulate something like the catch of your swim movement. Um, I would do the, uh, uh, the row, it's the, uh, the uh, uh, cable row. Um, yeah. And I would I would do the uh, tricep pull down. Okay. So bit, because I, that um, would be the the push face of the swim. Literally, them free. I would say everyone goodbye, and uh, I I would hop on home. That's that's it. 
All right. I Okay, a couple of questions. First question, what's the goal of your strength training? Um, so many of the, many of the workouts were, uh, uh, are the main muscles that I use as a triathlete. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, what's the, what's, what's the goal? Well, one of the goals build testosterone, uh, <laughs> for going to the gym. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, basically just, uh, uh, build more strength and, uh, and thus, uh, peak your performance. Performance. Cool. And how long rest are you having in between your sets of your exercises? A um, couple of WhatsApp messages. Something. <laughs> uh, no, I would say. <laughs> I, uh, I as well. I'm like, oh, I'll reply to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, you mean in between reps or in between sets? I would say in between, in between. Oh, uh, in between the uh, sets, I don't know, something like 20 seconds, 30 seconds. Okay. That's a big, the people always forget about rest and that's a big one. So, okay, my, my feedback. So your five minute warm up on the bike, that's what we call a general warm up. So mm -hmm. you got general or specific warm ups and a general warm up is like hopping on a bike or, you know, going for a little jog and that helps increase your heart rate a little bit, mm -hmm. release a little bit of adrenaline, get your body ready for a workout. So it's fine, but it's not the best for lifting so you could scrap that um and actually replace it with another exercise um that more replicates what you're about to get ready for your hip um bridges with the band around sounds good i would take out your five minute um bike and add in um, something a little bit more like even just a body weight or a weighted step up uh, that mm -hmm. would be a lot more applicable for triathlon and then with your main set exercises with your deadlifts, it was interesting because you were saying, you know, you felt them in your back, so yep. you decreased the weight. I generally say because we know that you relatively need to go heavy for your strength training for performance improvements and because you have a gym background, what you would have been better doing was keeping your weight heavy so it felt hard and shortening your range. So you either could have popped the barbell or your weights like up on other weight plates to shorten the range or made it a rack pull. So where you can put the safety racks out, you can shorten the range. So if your back ever gets sore again doing deadlifts, I would say to shorten the range but keep the weight heavy heavy because you want to keep the load heavy um, mm -hmm. as long as they're pain free for you the lunges lunges are a really good exercise but if you've been in the gym for a little while and considering your goals are performance I would suggest that you replace them with a barbell split squat because eventually when you're holding on to those dumbbells with your lunges your grip strength is going to give out before your lower limb strength and the point of lunges is a lower limb exercise. So go barbell and then you can go heavier with them as well. And the split squat is bringing your body weight back. So you can get a little bit more hamstring and adductor work rather than mm -hmm. specifically just quad work. Um, then uh, before we go into your upper body ones, I think that for your sets and reps and your load for what you're doing um, for your lower body stuff, you need more rest. So if you want to go heavier and get that testosterone going, get those maximum strength improvements <laughs> and your overall performance improvements, ideally two and a half to three minutes rest. So like long WhatsApp messages or like replying to multiple, oh, right? right? <laughs> yeah, yeah because... This is the main thing where endurance athletes go wrong is they get their rest wrong. It's like we put in so much time and effort thinking about exercise selection and load and all of these things. And then because we're just typical like OCD triathletes, we're like, I'm bored, quick, let's go back and do another set, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, you can't lift heavy and really nail technique, especially if you're under fatigued load. So you say if you were in the peak of training, to have a heavy enough load to make performance improvements when you're already tired from the rest of your endurance training you really need two and a half, three minutes rest so you can nail technique and you can nail load. Um, and if you don't have that rest, you're not going to be able to do those two things and you're going to be more sore the next day. So that would be my biggest critique of this program would be mm -hmm. more rest in between sets. And I like your upper body exercises. I think um, specifically for swimming, they're really, really good. Lap pull downs are an amazing exercise for swim, bike and run. Mm -hmm. um, they're great because you could just go heavy AF. You could just load it up. And the worst thing that happens if you can't pull it down is you literally just pull yourself up, right? So yeah, you yeah. Really doing them but like you said they replicate the pool of swimming but not only that our lats create this nice posterior sling on the back of us and where they insert is this thing called a thoracolumbar fascia so it's like a big 
fascia, like a non-pliable part of your back that helps stabilize your lower back and your glutes actually originate from there. Mm -hmm. So by strengthening your lats, you actually can help prevent low back pain and you can help actually improve glute power as well. So I think that any triathlete should always include either a pull-up or a lat pull-down and go really, really heavy. Um, And then, yeah, tricep extensions, great for swimming and they make your triceps look great. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, your exercises are good. So if you're a... If you're a big gun in the gym as a triathlete, would you say um, the pull up over a let's pull down? Because it's basically yeah. the same muscle muscle group. It's, but it I, is. You get so but, much more core when you do a pull yeah. up. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so if you you would say if you're really confident, you should do the pull up. Go pull up. Yeah. Come on, Tom, All right. step it up. <laughs> yeah, no, I could, I could do it. I could more do it. pull downs for you, pull ups only, and you can get a band, like if you want to make them slightly easier. <laughs> what um, as uh, um, as as triathletes, we mainly use the core muscles in literally uh, running, swimming. Well, especially the swim and and on the bike as well. Maybe you don't really sense it, but in the t- in time trial position, you uh, use a lot of the uh, core muscles. Mm-hmm. Would you say um, there should be a block in there of doing uh, solely core exercise as well? Or would you say uh, with doing deadlifts, lat pull down and all that, you also engage your core so it wouldn't be necessary to spend extra time on doing core workouts? Yeah, I would definitely say the latter of what you said. Absolutely. So there's a couple of reasons for this. First one, like we touched on, time restraints is the biggest issue for triathletes completing strength training. So don't add extra exercises you don't need to do, like a sit-up or a crunch or whatever or a plank because we don't need them. There, And you nailed it when you said, you know, with your deadlifts and your squats, et cetera, you get the core activation in there. And there was a good study that came out in 2018 and they actually put EMG markers on the core muscles. And even though that's not particularly even just the best way of measuring muscle activity it's still really helpful and what they found was when they compared a back squat and a plank the back squat actually had greater activation of erector spinae so the back muscles and the same activation of the rest of the core muscles as a plank did so we know that back squats have been shown in the research to improve running and cycling economy so just do heavier back squats and you'll get that core activation there or tie it in, you know, with like a single leg deadlift and you're going to get a lot of core in there. So, uh, or the pull up, like we were talking about, you do those, I can guarantee you, you'll be feeling your abs working by the end of it. I always say to people, just tie your core exercises in with everything and there's actually even a little bit of research now that shows if you do isolated core exercises you can increase your chance of getting back pain um so it's like it sounds counterintuitive but it's yeah. definitely needed and also it's of course a myth that um doing a lot of six-pack exercises are going to give you a six-pack because in the end that's got to do with uh, low body fat <laughs> I hear people uh, go i do all these crunches and i'm like yeah but yeah. you eat a lot yeah. like yeah, you go you to the donald's <laughs> yeah you spend too much time at max are there like i've got a six pack but you can't really see it right because i also love food like yeah. <laughs> and the wines the wines in australia are pretty good oh, what yeah, um gym. are there any <laughs> other uh myths that you'd say uh you want to bust before um, we end the introduction to it was the main one i'm glad you touched on um your the body weight one because that's a big one and i know that we're going to chat a bit more in future ones about like the sets and reps but one of the other big myths is this like you have to do um high rep work and again that comes from like oh well i'm an endurance athlete so i should do 20 reps crack a sweat in the gym but it's completely not the case and that's a huge huge myth that will not improve your performance doing circuit training and that kind of thing is not how you get faster from the gym for endurance training yeah i i I know a lot of triathletes that do it for example um Mm -hmm. they're standing there with two five kg uh, dumbbells and doing something like 15 reps or 20 reps i'm thinking if you want to have five kgs just buy a bottle of milk and walk home but um (laughs) Uh, why why wouldn't that be uh, beneficial just to go in it a little bit and the circuit training yeah. you were saying circuit training doesn't help so that's more of the high intensity probably high intensity training that you're uh, referring to yeah like 
Yeah, circuit training would be like if you set up, say, five different stations of, say, like med ball slams, um, like push-ups or whatever, and you kind of like rotate through, say, every 30 seconds. That's like Mm -hmm. um, circuit training and it's really high intensity. But for that, you're getting similar adaptations as your endurance training. So, So like going for a run, right? You're working on more heart rate. If you go really, really high intensity, sure, you might mm-hmm. produce a little bit of lactate. So you're working on those things. But your strength training and how you improve it is like we sort of said at the start, it's that muscular power. It's improvements in maximal strength, improvements in rate of force development, muscular tenderness, stiffness. And to get those improvements, you have to go at a heavier weight and lower reps because our body needs a particular mechanical stimulus before it adapts. If you're going too light, you are not putting enough mechanical stimulus into your muscles and into you, particularly your tendons, for your body to actually adapt. Tendons, there's even research showing that sometimes you need greater than 90% of your maximum weight for your tendon to actually adapt. And if you're thinking about, you know, some med ball slams or like 20 reps of a body weight squat, your body, like that, you need the adaptations you need to see perform, substantial performance improvements, it's not going to happen. And all that you're doing and doing that is just making yourself really sore and tired. So mm-hmm. it's like you're not only getting the not getting the performance improvements, but you're running yourself in the ground without performance improvements. And then you just become really frustrated. And then you're like, oh, I'm killing and, myself in the gym and I'm not getting any better. <laughs> and, and also no one really thinks um, someone is a big dog in the gym when you're standing there with baby weights. But um, <laughs> of course, there is a contradiction when you're going to the gym right now after listening to this podcast and you're thinking, all right, I'll start off and I'll get the 50 kg dumbbells. Um, I found that when I started off doing gym training after a long, long time, of course, you, you first have the anatomical adaptation phase, right? So your body gets used to the strength training. So I wouldn't start off with going too, too heavy um to get used to it but then after the uh, uh like doing two weeks of that when you're a little bit used to it then uh like ramp up the weights but yeah like you said we're going into that in uh, in, in future episodes mm-hmm. so yeah the the baby weights and 20 reps and uh, uh 30 reps whatever yeah it's more it's more like really endurance training what we already do as as triathletes um yeah because then we'll, we'll talk about as well, like swimming with paddles, which is also strength training, how we'd compare that, but uh, we'll go into that later on. Um, is, um, is there anything else you want to touch on the introduction of, of, uh, um, strength training for triathletes now? Or yeah, uh, I just think it, you know, you should really get the, the, the credit it deserves and if anyone out there like who was saying you know it has consistent niggles or wants mm-hmm. to take performance to the next level like that's where your strength training really comes from and it just it doesn't have to be complex and we can go through a couple of case studies and examples and like I loved going through yours and sort of <laughs> giving that feedback on it um, but strength training for endurance athletes can be really really simple and really, really time effective. It's, I always say to people, it's a means to an end. Like it doesn't have to be, I mean, you and I, I think Tom are like in the minority where we just love going to the gym. Like I could spend all day in the gym. Yeah. But if you're listening and you go, I hate the gym. There's a reason I do triathlon because I love going outside. I hate the gym. So like the good news is you can do really simple stuff. Like you can just go in, nail your exercises and get out. Like I would say even Tom, your program is quite big. Like you could do half that amount and still get really good improvement. So we can chat a lot in future about how yeah. simple it can be. All right. Yeah. And also, um, you, you start to love the gym. Maybe at first you don't like it, but you'll, you'll start to love it also, uh, to get a little bit, you'll get a little bit more of the, uh, physique through it. Um, so if you want to let know a little bit more about Kate or about, uh, about a program or whatever, you can head over to, uh, endurance movement is dot com endurance movement.com. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, for now, uh, uh, thanks, Kate. And then uh, uh, next time we'll talk about the, uh, the build up uh, uh, of strength training, probably in something like three weeks. Um, thanks for listening, listening everyone. Uh, let us know what you uh, think and especially what you want to know about strength training, because in the end, maybe we can do a little recap episode with uh, questions that people like in the gym have no flipping clue what they're doing after uh, four episodes. So we can uh, touch on that a little bit. Um, yeah, thanks, Kate, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks, Bye-bye. Tom. Bye.